Sorry, my uh, screen didn't pop up like it should have. There we go. So can everybody see that okay? Can someone please just confirm that you can see the screen, the slideshow screen? Looks good, Rusty. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I have to bring the chat back up. Okay. All right. So for those that don't know me, my name is Rusty Martis. I uh, run the Veterans Resource Station. Um, we're going to run through these slides pretty quick uh, to go over really who we are, what we are, and where we're heading, and kind of the future of the VRS, the VRS being the Veteran Resource Station. All right. Uh, I did 24 years of military service. I was an Air Force Mustang, which just means I was uh, enlisted for 12 years, was an officer for 12. Uh, got an MBA, or excuse me, a Master in Business and a Bachelor's in Organization leadership. Also um, have a certificate in the National Council for Community Behavioral Health Care and also a certified uh, resume writer in addition to that. Uh, been working veteran services really since 2012. Uh, started out in VA disability and VA medical, um, helping veterans get into the VA or file for disability services. Um, also, a, uh, or excuse me, I went into veteran employment in 2016 and came to NKU to kind of do educational benefits uh, starting in August of last year. Sorry, I had to take a delay there. I lost my screen on, I couldn't see you guys. So I wanted to make sure I could see us. So apologize for that, but I'm gonna bring that up. Okay, so um, the student veteran, as we all know that we do have student veterans on campus of only about 5% of the American population qualify for to even join the services and only about 1% do so across the board. And so the pretty small group, um, when we talk about diversity, we definitely are talking about veterans as they are a diverse group, come from all backgrounds and socioeconomic status. On campus, we have about 2%, but uh, they're not alone, right? So they have uh, like-minded folks that they can hang out with here at the VRS. And <clears throat> what we accomplish as a VRS, uh, this is the mission statement. Um, it's been tweaked a little bit and I'm still in the process of tweaking it. Uh, but it's basically we set ourselves up to be a one-stop shop. We're kind of the connector, the liaison uh, for the community to provide facilitating and coordinate programs and services for our veterans, military affiliate students. When I say military affiliate students, I'm talking about uh, not only active duty, but guard and reserves, but also the dependents as well. And we're also here for faculty and staff. Um, what we are working towards, and we act kind of as a secondary mission right now, uh, I'll talk a little bit about when I talk about future of VRS, but uh, we are a connector for all of regional uh, military veterans and our families to services. And we want to do this to make sure that they are getting set up to accomplish their goals. Uh, our priority will always be for our military affiliate and veteran students, but we're here for the community as well. All right, so the pop box, red box that just popped up there is just talking a little bit about uh, we've been, you know, nationally recognized as a military friendly school. Um, really since 2015. So the VRS, just a little bit of background history, was created and started in 2013 by Mr. Dave Maris. Uh, he still acts kind of as a mentor and guide. I've known Dave for a very long time and I'm fortunate enough that uh, to be able to still reach out to him for advice and as, like I said, really as a mentor. Um, you'll notice that our numbers back in 2015, we were rated as high as number 47. It's kind of dropped a little bit here and there throughout the years for various reasons, but we're on the upswing right now. We recently were identified as a gold standard school. Um, just as an example, last year we were bronze, or two years ago, I guess it would have been, we were a bronze school. Gold status just means that we're in the top 10% of uh, all universities, colleges that uh, across the nation. And uh, so to be within 10% is a pretty great accomplishment. We're very proud of that. We haven't received our official number yet. We expect that uh, any day now. I did see, and kind of as a benchmark for what I'm trying to accomplish here at NKU throughout the state of Kentucky, is that Eastern Kentucky University, who tr traditionally is in the top 10 across the nation, was just recently rated number two in the nation. So we're fortunate enough to have them right down the road that we can reach out to and work with as well, kind of again, as a benchmark standard. The 35% is the NKU graduation rate. Um, across the nation, we're at 54%. We're always trying to reach at least that level. I, I kind of want to double that. That's kind of my goal is to double the graduation rate. And I'll kind of go into a little bit about the reasons why I feel the graduation rate is a little bit lower 
here at NKU. All right, so we do what we call a priority service. And that basically just means if you're military, military affiliate or veteran student, uh, you have some, some benefits that can be picked up or acquired through the VRS um, to include just, again, being a connector, a liaison to local, state, federal benefits and resources. They also have access to computers. Can't thank the provost office and NKU enough as we just recently got all new computer systems and a new printer, which is a big deal because we hated our old printer. We, it would cause uh, problems and frustrations um, amongst all of us uh, to include students at, as they were trying to print things out. But they do have free printing here and uh, access to what I call the at ease lounge. It's just really a social area where they can study, hang out along with other like-minded folks um, and just relax. You know, there's a television that they can, can utilize and some other things as well. Um, access to refrigerator and microwave through our new partnership with NKU Fuel. And thanks to a very nice donation from the DFW in Latonia, uh, our refrigerator is full of drinks uh, that are absolutely free for the students that qualify for our services and uh, snacks, meals. Uh, we have breakfast burritos, so on and so forth like that. So they can come in and uh, hang out, get a just get a break from everyday studies or life, wherever the case may be. But really, the key to it is just get engagement, right? We want to make sure we're able to talk to them, reach out to them. Um, and let them know that we're here in case they need anything at all. But uh, what it turns out to, and I just had this happen just the other day, is they just hang out and talk, right? So it's kind of uh, um, just nice to be, again, around like-minded folks that you can share experiences with and kind of be a coach and mentor, even though you're not necessarily doing that, it just naturally occurs. Okay, they, they share their experiences and what went through. Uh, they also qualify for super priority registration, just meaning that they can register for classes one day earlier than priority registration, same as the athletes do. And they also qualify for waiver um, for, for first year housing. Uh, I got the max transfer credits for military training experience in red. I'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a few moments as I talk about things that we're working on and things that we're accomplishing. All right, just some campus highlights real quick. Um, as far as veteran status is concerned, according to the VA, we have about 469 st students on campus that are considered veterans and that they're using educational benefits. And that could be your chapter 31, chapter 33 um, benefits. That's uh, VA educational benefits. As we know that most military service members get out with a other than honorable or at least honorable type discharge, that they're gonna get some qualifying benefits associated with that. So we can help kind of walk them through that, get all the paperwork together, get them over to the wonderful SCOs. We're very fortunate to have two outstanding SCOs, that's school certifying officials here. They actually go through and certify those benefits and tell the VA that the, the students are in classes. And that's uh, Denzel Carter and Josh Chandler. So then registrar's office. Again, we're very fortunate because a lot of schools um, that I've worked with in the past and even use my own benefits in the past. We're, a lot of times that's an area of frustration that can be avoided here because we have two outstanding school certifying officials. But we also have about 102 dependents that use what we call chapter 35 benefits, dependent benefits um, that are also in there. And that does not include the TA, which is federal and state uh, benefits that we also receive. Um, just as an example, when I started last semester, we had 349 listed. So I think we're growing and it just seems like we're growing on a daily, weekly, regular basis as the phone rings a little bit more and answer question about benefits. All right. So I talked about engagement uh, just a few slides ago. I'm going to talk about it throughout the entire uh, presentation because that's the key in my eyes is to, to have the students come in and be engaged with other veteran military affiliate students um, within the VRS. Over the last 30 days, I'm going to put that in air quotes a little bit because uh, I didn't run the numbers exactly over the last 30 days, but I know from last semester, we have about 122 visits per month. This month, this semester, we're up to about 158. We're trending upwards. That means about 32 veterans, military affiliate students come through our office a week. That's at 8% usage rates of the facilities. And that's key. Keep that number in mind as we talk about engagement rate. 
just some quick statistics. I'm a statistics and I am a quotes guy. So some statistics. We know that about 62% of all our student vectors are first generate college students. 55% are married. 45% are also working. What's that tell you? They're adult learners, right? Uh, they got life experiences that they bring to the table and uh, also stresses and pressures that they also are dealing with outside of school. So from an NKU standpoint, we know we do get some funding through that. We get about $3.2 million of that NKU received over the last year as I did the statistics and everything thanks to Student Account Services um, to help me figure then get the numbers put up together as we put forth as we apply for different types of awards and also soon hopefully grants and donations. All right, so why are we here and why is this important? Well, we wanna be the mechanism for student transition success. Uh, military transition is very difficult. I keep saying them and throw some statistics up there to prove it here in just a second. But we know if they can come through our office or at least hang out with other like-minded folks um, that we can help them be successful in their transition. But it's not only that help them be successful in their transition out of the military, but we also know there's gonna be success in school, career, life, and in their future. All right, um, but like I said, we do have federal and National Guard um, personnel that utilize the services as well. Currently, uh, according to the last statistics that I saw, we had uh, 87 National Guard members using state TA benefits. That's key and that's important because uh, our Kentucky National Guard folks come to public, um, in-state schools, as Northern Kentucky University is, basically tuition-free, um, up to a certain dollar amount that they can receive through those benefits. One of those was uh, Miss Audrey Rowland, Specialist Rowland, came to our office and we were able to hook her up and set her up um, using state benefits versus using a national benefit, which was a better resource for her to set her, her up for success going forward. All right. Um, as mentioned, I do have a certificate in National Council for Community Behavioral Health Care for serving our veterans. I wish I would have got this certificate when I first got out of the service in 2014, because as I was going through it, I was like, wow, I went through a lot of those same things that we're talking about and learning about to get the certificate. Uh, we know that veterans are at increased risk for depression, trauma, stress-related disorders, suicide, substance-related disorders, and serious mental illness. So just to back that up with some statistics, um, well, I guess I'm going to say freedom isn't free and evil never rests. The, I truly believe that every military member, especially combat veterans, uh, kind of give up their normalcy for America. But you know what? That's okay. It's, it's absolutely worth it. But we want to be here to support, guide them, and make, again, make sure they're set up for their success. All right, here's some of those statistics that I promised you. Again, I'm not going to go through each one of these because I'm going to break these down a little bit more uh, as we go forward. But we know that uh, there's a lot of... Um, uh, concerns. Um, there's a lot of uh, areas for that we can help our, our military affiliate and veteran students work through to ensure that they are successful. All right, some of the statistics I do want to cover as a college student, according to the APA, we know that a normal college student has a suicide rate about 1.3% with a 6% um, that say they have a suicidal plan. Well, that jumps up tremendously when we talk about veterans. So veterans are about 7.7% .7 and 20% with suicide plan. So what can we do to work with them to ensure the lower that number, eliminate that number here at NKU? Now, according to militarytransitional.org, we know that transition is, is very, very stressful. Personally, I went through a very um, stressful transitional period for several years until I kind of find my well my way, finding that purpose and that passion, that uh, high intensity level that you experience uh, in the military again. 76% uh, uh, say it is very stressful and 48% say it's more stressful than what they even thought they would experience. The American Warrior Partnership through a grant through Bristol and Scripps throughout the, through the University of Alabama has been studying strictly veteran suicide over the last four to five years. And these are some of the statistics that they found. If you have early engagement with the student veteran, this is with veterans in general, but in our case with student veterans, you have a, the student veteran will have a well being rate greater than 21%. But what's really interesting is if you have consistent engagement, again, engagement being the key here, getting them into the VRS, um, just 
hanging out with the like-minded folks again, it's very key and very important. Uh, for all faculty and staff that's on this uh, Zoom call today, you probably gonna have more engagement than I am. So I highly, just as a plug, encourage you to join the Green Zone Brigade, and we'll talk a little about that in a few minutes. But the engagement rate jumps to 79% well-being rate. That's constant, consistent engagement with the veteran over um, three months time period. If we go back to AWP and look at what they say over the last four years in a row, it's been proven or shown that building long-term relationship with veterans leads to their success. That's the whole reason we are here and we stay engaged with our veteran and military communication. All right. The takeaway is it takes more than just, um, you know, the student veterans working together. It takes everybody working together, right? It's a community of support, what we call a tribe. Um, working to serve our veterans, our military affiliate students, make sure that they're successfully transitioned into military service lives. According to the study that's listed down at the bottom of the page there, we know over 2.5 million records were reviewed that veterans had an increase in accidents homicide, suicide, cancer, and cardiovascular disease due to their service or their exposure, their experience in that service. So again, we need to remind them that they're not alone, that we have their backs, their battle buddies, we got their six um, like-minded folks and GZB, the Green, the Green Zone Brigade, are a list of volunteers throughout the campus that are there to support um, and that's what it's all about, right? Just being there, able to connect them to the right resources, being a beacon for them to uh, talk to, um, and someone that they can just, uh, that they know they can trust that will have their back, for lack of a better term. When we talk about transition, this is from the Tri-State Veterans Community Alliance that kind of just shows a normal path of transition if you try to accomplish that as a veteran by yourself. Ups and downs, ebbs and flows, those, uh, where it drops at the lowest point. That's where you usually traditionally see veterans get themselves in trouble through alcohol use, uh, drug abuse, um, you know, getting in trouble with the law and some of that, them other things. We know for a fact that if we have someone there to help support them, again, be that battle buddy, um, have their back, have their six, whatever you want to call it, that transition is a lot less stressful. It costs a lot less money. And more importantly, it is a avenue for them to be more successful getting back into that quote unquote civilian lifestyle um, through support again just a reminder awp has proved this as long as we have a um, connection with them that we can increase their well-being rate significantly well we can be that bridge for them right the, the vrs is here to support them and be a beacon for them for their success all right, the, if you add the tricons up along with the green zone train, what's that equal out to? Well, it equals out to long-term success. At least that's what we're hoping for. We launched the green zone back in November. Um, we have about 58 members, I think, currently on that uh, green zone brigade, which I'll talk a little bit about uh, where you can find that information here in a, in a few minutes. So if you haven't heard of Zavashi Younger, he uh, wrote the award-winning book called The Tribe. I read this in 2016. And again, I was like, wow, I wish I would have read this when I first got out of the service because it really talked about um, the different ups and downs that you go through as a veteran trying to find your way back into that civilian lifestyle, that civilian way. But there's three keys that came out of it. Traditionally, they want to be competent, I think, and connected. So again, everything that we can do from the VRS standpoint and also through the Green Zone Brigade. So I took that, rewrapped it around a little bit, came up with the tribe concept, which basically as we sit down and talk to our military affiliate veteran students, we want to triage, refer, ignite their flame, build a plan, give them goals, and uh, empower them. We don't want to enable, we want to empower them to be a participant in their own plan and set them up for success. But we'll stay here and be part of that success throughout as the tribe concept consists of. So we do that through what we call the veteran liaison journey, achieving the next mission. Military minded, right, folks, uh, always see the next mission, their set of goals, that next vision, whatever you want to call it, but really we call it the next mission just to stay within the same terminology. We want to sit down, we have engagement with them, do an assessment, develop a plan, um, refer as needed, and uh, and make sure that they're successful in achieving. What are we really trying to do? We're 
building a relationship, right? Where if we need to be a coach, a mentor, uh, but we're going to be committed with them and do follow up to ensure that they're uh, continue that that, that uh, pathway towards success by building their confidence, building trust, and building that relationship. Um, almost every week, I tell, always tell a veteran, um, it's okay to stumble a little bit and go backwards. But just take it as a, a leap that you're building momentum to, to bust through the wall um, to keep moving forward. And that's what we try to do. Um, again, we are a resource connector. That's what we are here to do. Um, and that's not only on campus, but it's also federal, state, local um, resources that are throughout. We're very fortunate enough to be uh, founder of the North Kentucky Military Veteran Coalition, which is a group of support and advocates of veteran service organizations of 60 plus organizations that work together for our military veterans and their families right here in Northern Kentucky. So there's, we have a resource for them. All right. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is what we call the 4C. This, again, was developed by TVCA, Tri-State Veterans Community Alliance, and uh, social worker Pat Clifford that I worked very closely with uh, back in 2016 through 2019. And it's really working on that mental, physical, spiritual, holistic approach to give them clarity of goals, where are they heading, connected to the right resources, and the right resources are key, and constant communication uh, back and forth, and making sure to contribute to community. And we found the contribution community is key because no matter why you join the service, and there's a plethora of reasons of why someone might have joined the service, um, you're kind of taught as you went go through that to to continue to serve right you get that feeling you want to serve so once you get out you lose that uh that easy access to service so what's another way to do that so we help walk them through that it's really offering a, a you know a series of value added activities that make their transition easy and successful all right Quickly, um, some of the sponsors that we picked up over the last couple of months, just want to uh, throw them out there. Home City Ice gave us a very nice, um, and, and the reason I want to talk about these sponsors, because the sponsors are key to allowing us to do our programming, right? To offer our services and do, to do other things. So Home City Ice gives a very um, lucrative uh, sponsorship to do things like free veteran honor course. So everybody that's graduating this uh in May here, we'll get a free veteran honor cord, thanks to that. Uh, I had to throw NKU on there, um, in particular, Matt Season in the provost office by helping us get our all our new computers and printer. Um, huge difference. Everybody notices it, uh, especially with the printer and in the computers, because the veterans, military affiliate students, they feel comfortable here. So they'll come here, they'll do things like uh, classes at the hybrid model. Um, they'll do interviews. I've had a couple of students do interviews in there because that's where they feel really comfortable at. So we want to set them up again for their success by providing them with the resources that are available or needed for them. And that's also going to talk a little bit as we move towards the future, some of the new things that we're getting in here. Um, Throughout there, Amazon as well. We're working with Amazon to do a, um, an event that will be launched here in the very near future. And we've had a couple of different VFWs in the local region give us significant uh, donations to help us as well. All right. It's a journey. And uh, we're kind of in the beginning of those steps, but uh, we know that it, we have to start. We have to move forward, right? And that's what we've been working on and what we're Sorry, doing. Could you say this again? And my Sorry. phone's yelling at me. All right, so some events and activities that are going forward just to keep on your radar. Some of the things that we're actively doing right now is uh, the student veteran organization Norse Vets was pretty active a few years ago. Um, it kind of fell off the table, you know, COVID and some of the other things when the students uh, really left campus and uh, did hybrid models or did strictly from their home computers, where the case may be, they're back up and running. So um, it's pretty exciting to get them up and moving in the right direction. And they're gonna be very active over the next couple of uh, semesters to help rebuild that and grow that up. Um, Reds Parade. So we've been asked to come and support the Reds uh, uh, opening day parade um, tomorrow, right? Yeah, that is tomorrow. And uh, so if anybody's out there that wants to join that parade, please just shoot me a quick email. 
um, and I'll send you the information. Now, I did send that information out via Canvas a couple of different times, so you may have it on Canvas as well. But uh, really, it's show up. You can bring your family. Uh, they ask that you wear NKU gear or your military affiliate gear, or even better, both. And uh, you can walk the Reds Parade, um, you know, waving the, the American flags and so on and so forth. It should be pretty cool. Um, I mentioned Green Zone Brigade training several times. I'm going to show exactly how you can go there to sign up or be a part of that. And uh, again, I kind of set this up for the students to be aware of what Green Zone training is. Um, but we're also asking the students to be involved. So right now, we currently don't have any students involved in the Green Zone. We'd like to have them part of our board. We call the board VETA, uh, the VRS Educational Transitioning or Team. Um, of advisors that uh, um, and they can come and be part of that and, and they can also be part of um, some other activities that are going on along with the green zone and with VETA. All right, uh, we do have donuts today. So if you haven't had your breakfast, I know it's late in the day, but you can stop by. That was donated by Mattress by Appointment. Uh, but we get those time, like, like micro donations and so on and so forth that uh, you never know what's going to be here. So if, uh, if you ever want to stop by and see what we have in the morning, um, thanks to Fuel NKU, we always have coffee brewing and snacks that are available. And uh, right now we have, like I said, breakfast burritos were seem to be very, the most popular item on the fridge at the moment, but we have other things like drinks that were donated by VFW in Latonia. So there's, uh, I asked some of the students what they wanted. The number one choice was monsters, <laughs> which just cracks me up because I'm not a monster drinker, but that's not what they want. That's what they get. But we also have water and Gatorade and some sodas and different things along that line as well. That's absolutely free for all our military affiliate veteran students that are on educational benefits. And it doesn't even really need to be on educational benefits. Um, you know, if there are a military member or a veteran or a dependent, we're not going to turn them away. We'll, we'll be happy to sit down with them, um, talk to them, again, uh, work with them to make sure that they're successful. All right, I, mixed, I already mentioned about the graduation cords, uh, cords donated by Home City Ice, along with a bunch of other things that we were able to produce and provide thanks to their, their very nice sponsorship and donation. We're currently running a putt-putt challenge. So um, I found a putter, um, a few golf balls, and a putting green as I was cleaning up. Um, and so I said, hey, we want engagement. Let's throw as many opportunities out there to bring people into our offices. So we're having a little challenge this month. They come in, they can stink a putt and win a t-shirt. So um, it's something just a little bit different that we'll try. Uh, we started electronic ads that are, went out um, last Friday. Uh, this one, one, this month is particular, it's focused around service dog etiquette. So look for that as well. Uh, career support services obviously are through NKU. Um, we also have a working relationship with the Kentucky Career Center and uh, through the North Kentucky Military Veteran Coalition. And I'll show you the website and where to find that information here in just a few minutes. Some of the things are upcoming very soon. I'm sure you all heard by now as I've been sending out emails and information and Facebook and all kinds of other things about our vet mixer. So the vet mixer is an opportunity for military affiliate um, and veteran all across the region to get together and just network, right? Get together and network. Um, really would love to see a great group of NKU students available and show up to this to show our support, show their support, our support uh, to our sponsors and donors. Uh, we have businesses that are going to be there. They're going to be um, they're there to network because they're looking to hire folks, especially the recent graduates that are getting, are getting ready to graduate here in May, uh, but also family and spouse members as well can come and talk to them. Um, faculty and staff are invited. Several faculty and staff are coming. Members and non-members of the Green Zone will be there on site. Um, we have veteran service organizations that are scheduled to be there. Um, I have at least one state um, official that told me that they would be uh, available there as well. Um, we have the DAV that's scheduled to be there. So if you have any questions around VA benefits, that they'll be able to, to help with that. But really, it's just getting out there and have camaraderie, having a social event. Um, and I always try to schedule these or put these around organizations or um, companies that are owned by veterans. So this one particular one is going to be at the Alexander Brewing Company right down the road. Um, and it will be Wednesday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, for the students, uh, just so you know, I'll be sending out a Canvas survey here in the next couple of days. 
And it's really going to be saying, what have you seen? What are you experiencing here at NKU, right? And we're going to take all this information back and, and uh, give it to VETA. Uh, again, the, are basically kind of like our board for the VRS. Uh, we have some recognition pins that are on order. Again, thanks to Home City Ice, we we're able to get that accomplished. Um, our champion success medal. So I'll have a picture here in just a second of what that means. But we'll be, um, we had our first year, our last Veterans Day it was our first year. We gave away four awards. We gave one award away for veteran students that is showing champions to success for other military affiliate and veterans and dependents. Um, we have one student non-veteran. We have a faculty staff veteran, faculty staff non-veteran awards that goes out. And uh, we'll be doing that again this coming up in November. Um, we'll be asking for nominations, you know, around uh, September timeframe. So look for that as well. If you got books and you're uh, not going to utilize them anymore, you can turn them into the U to who us here at uh, UC131 at the VRS, um, either to get them over to the Lending Library or as a possible fundraiser activity um, here coming up as well. Uh, we're launching a, in a partnership with uh, Triad and North Kentucky Chamber of Commerce, the Living Here website, which we will be uh, the, kind of the premier veteran resource for anybody that is looking to transition into North Kentucky, or if you're already here, because of really what it is, it's what it's like to live here in Northern Kentucky. It's gonna highlight and advertise all the great things that we bring to the table, but we want to make sure that we're gonna be that one-stop shop for our community as well. So this is gonna launch as a pilot program at uh, Fort Campbell, which we're working on a couple of different things down at the Fort Campbell um, area. Uh, that I'll talk about here in just a second. But the Living Here website, it, they, any military veteran, dependent that has any veteran type questions, they can click on that. Um, it'll be an email that'll come directly to our office and we'll connect them to the right resources. And of course, if they want some educational benefits, we're here to answer those questions, get them hooked up at NKU as well. But we wanna be, um, like I said, our kind of our secondary mission is to be that connector for, for our local military veterans and their family members. And that's local, when I say local, I'm talking about anybody who wants to even come here as well. Um, working with the MBLA and informatics and Case, the Kentucky, uh, our Kent County School Board with new partnerships. I'll have another slide on that coming up here as well. Um, we're working on a DAV partnership. Launching August 5th is our first ever service to college boot camp that is set up to allow any new coming freshmen coming in to be able to set up their benefits early so they can get started with their payments quicker, faster, and also to start that transitional process because it's a lot different. Uh, military training is a lot different than college training, so we're going to set them up for success. Uh, the Mayerson Project, UNV 101V, I mean, though we don't have the V on there anymore, it's really a military affiliate veteran uh, 101 course, an orientation to college course that's focused around that service, right? I talked about they continue to serve. So we're gonna have as a Marison's project and that'll be in the fall as well. Um, I told you about VETA, but we'll have a slide on that. And we're also working with the planetarium, thanks to Ms. Jennifer Stevens, who is part of the Green Zone Brigade, um, visit for vets. So we're working on something we're gonna do with NORS vets, um, possibly uh, bringing on some of the community partners as well, or open it up to family members, uh, veterans to come and spend the night absolutely free at the planetarium um, here at NKU. All right, so I told you we're going over top 10%. If you're looking for a member of the Green Zone um, Brigade, you can look for this magnet or flathead. So this would be displayed probably up on their desk, their cubicle, wherever the case may be, window, office window, door, whatever the case may be. But if you see this sign, that means they have been officially trained. They are a volunteer and they're here to support you as a military affiliate and veteran student. All right, I mentioned about the recognition pen. This is what it's going to look like. Throw, shout out to Dave Bichelle over at Marcom um, who helped design this. And uh, these are on order. This is meant to go on your lapel um, when you're interviewing. Uh, working with the KCC, I told you we do a partnership with them as well. Uh, they'll be having their 
job fair, military veteran job fair is May 5th. I hope I have these pins in by then, but you wear these, it just shows that you're a veteran, right? Uh, but to build pride around campus as well, you can put this on your cap, you can put it on your backpack, and you can wear it on your suit um, when you're going out to these types of uh, events or networking events. All right, the NKU Veterans Program, um, you know, there's just kind of a, a, a picture of last year's event. It was supposed to be outside. Weather said, nope, we're going to do it inside. Um, but we were able to pull it off. And uh, you see three of our four award winners were with uh, our president as well. All right. This is part of the Master of Business Leadership Innovation Program. Um, like I said, we're starting a new partnership with them. Uh, we're going to really highlight some of the things that we want to do um, down at Fort Campbell for those that uh, want to go ahead and use um, some additional benefits there to get their, their MBLI or the MBA. Um, but at Fort Campbell, we're also working with Informatics because they have a big signal branch down there. That signal branch is uh, a great fit for Informatics. So we need to work with them, get those, uh, that information across through them as well. Um, KCSD, I mentioned that we're working on a partnership with them as well. They are having a teacher job fair come up on Tuesday, April 19th from 5 to 7 p.m. What's really cool about them and not a lot of people know about is uh, if you're in college and you haven't got your degree yet, you can substitute teach and it's very flexible. Um, so we're working on a streamlined process with them to get folks in there that want to. The Kentucky Commission of Military Affairs has done a wonderful job on a couple of key initiatives. One of them being if you're a military member with a bachelor's degree, you can come and teach in the state of Kentucky as you go through um, getting your certification. So you can start working ASAP um, and get into you know, your career right out in the military with a bachelor's degree if you want to be a teacher. And uh, as we work to get you your certificate in teaching, um, if anybody out there is uh, friends, family, or works with the, the College of Education, uh, we need to do a joint partnership around the wraparound services completely to make it an easy, smooth transition into that. In addition to that, um, we are working with KCSD um, and a few other organizations through the DOD SkillBridge. DOD SkillBridge is a pretty new program that's up and coming. I've been working with the KCMA folks, uh, in particular uh, Dr. Katzer down at KCMA in Frankfurt um, to really launch th this partnership between the state, DOD, local community organizations, companies that are hiring, and NKU to facilitate education um, throughout the, the region. So it's some really cool and exciting things uh, going on with that. Uh, this is the, uh, again, the Marcom um, helped us put this together for the digital advertisement for, for the service dog. Um, I hear, you know, fairly regular complaints about uh, um, the knowledge and education around service dogs throughout NKU. And it comes from, you know, um, you know faculty, staff, students, the whole, everybody. Uh, just needs to be more aware. So we're helping to do that through this program as well. All right, some of the things that you might want to keep on your radar are some of the things that are upcoming for the VRS as well. Um, working with development, and it's huge, right? So I already mentioned that Home City Ice has been a major sponsor of Amazon, uh, VFW, um, NKU in itself, but we're completing, continue to build a plan um, almost daily. I'm working with uh, development. Um, Sarah Bird in particular has been assigned to work with the VRS uh, to build this plan and to continue to grow our partnerships, our donations, our sponsorships, because we want to offer more services. We want to offer more programs, and we're leading to a bigger thing that I'll talk about here in just a just a second but one of those things is a new look vrs so we're completely flipping it so if you've been inside the the vrs um you'll know that as you first walk in that's kind of the student lounge the at ease lounge we're going to move that to the back put offices up the front um, to allow them to give them a space that they're kind of can get away and uh um, be able to accomplish the things that they need to get done and accomplish or just relax and chill all right, so we're working on a launch day. It's going to be a big deal. We'll have a ribbon cutting. Um, we'll be uh, focused around fundraising efforts as well. Um, but we're going to be, the goal is to launch in fall of 2023. I know every time I say that facility kind of just looks at me strange and weird and says good luck uh, because of that 
not because of their fault, but because of uh, um, challenges with the supply chain and some other things. So there's some other things. If it doesn't happen then, then we'll look to launch in, in Veterans Day of 2023. All right, and I said there's bigger things coming. Leadership is on board to move towards what I call Mars, right? So I was a Space Force guy, a space guy, uh, moving into the next direction. We're going into um, where we want to go to be a community-based one-stop shop that supports all military veterans and their family members. And of course, we'll focus on our military affiliate and veteran students as well. We're moving towards Mars or the military affiliate resource station where we'll have a standalone um, building to be able to support the community in anything and everything we do. And I have a few pictures of what it might look like up at Mars or in Mars here in just a few minutes. Um, great can't speak enough for the, I'll call it an ad hoc work group that's being led by Amy Danzo um, to really look at our JST, our Joint Service Transcript. It's really what it's trying to do is maximize our military training experience that we say that we do for our military um, and veteran students that trans that send their transcripts in through the JST, a Joint Service Transcript. And uh, she's done some amazing work and uh, in a very short time, it's got a lot of momentum wrapped around it. It should be some exciting news coming out of that here in the hopefully near future. Uh, also working with Dr. Julie Olderdeen um, to do a undergraduate micro-credential uh, serving our veterans and their families. There is already a graduate program that's already done. And so transferring that over to an opportunity for anybody that wants to work or just learn more about uh, veterans um, to be a micro-credential at the undergraduate level as well. That's gonna happen, uh, knock on wood. It's just a matter of getting the right timing down and when that's gonna be launched. There's also exploration, explorer and exploration is, uh, so I said space guy, I can say exploration, a mandatory freshman 101 V course. So I'm allowed to say that is in exploration at this time, but I'm really excited to think that's gonna happen um, to really help it's going to be very key in that not only in that engagement piece, but in that supporting um, the military folks that are transitioning back into civilian life. It's going to be huge. It, we're also working with the the Kentucky Veterans or Kentucky um, Success Collaborative on a launch of the Kentucky Veterans Student Success Community of Practice, which will be launching probably within the next week or two. So that's something else that's going to be exciting. It's really bringing all throughout the state of Kentucky, um, any veteran resource station, any veteran resource center, any, um, you know, college, school, uh, anything that offers educational benefits for the VA, working together, um, sharing all best practices and uh, make sure that we're, we're military ready and not only, mil not only military ready, but military friendly, military friendly, but also military ready throughout the state. Uh, for from at the college level or higher educational level. So that's very exciting coming forth here real quick. Working with uh, Wounded Warrior Project, do a gaming night. Um, and, you know, it, we're, we've done the vet nets. It's still similar to a vet mixer in the past, and we may be launching something similar like that. My question to the students out there, again, I'll be sending out a survey here in the near future, is that something you want to get involved in? And if there's enough interest, we'll get it launched. And also what training, you know, um, I've done several trainings, you know, usually about every two weeks, every three weeks, I'll do a, a, some type of training. Um, it could be educational benefits. This last Friday, I did one on um, turning your military resume into civilian speak and also offshoot about networking, leading into our networking events. So if there's additional training that's out there or need it, please let me know. Again, you can do that via the survey or you can stop by UC131 or you can shoot me an email and all my contact information will be here shortly. Also working on the state side, I already meant the Kentucky Veterans Success Collaborative, but working, um, been invited down to, uh, I say invite it, invite it down to Frankfurt, but really it's a Zoom meeting. Um, it's gonna happen in, in May to talk about uh, what we're doing here at NKU and throughout the community um, for Northern Kentucky um, at the Governor's VA Council, which is, uh, could lead to some other activities that are going to occur. Um, part of the Kentucky Workforce and Innovative Board for um, Military and Veteran Hiring is, is their subcommittee. And uh, 
we are NKU, so I'm the only representative throughout uh, the state that represents Northern Kentucky. Um, so we got a lot of opportunities to showcase what we're doing and why we need to be to grow that uh, North Kentucky area for our veterans. Um, and I always already mentioned that we're working a pilot program for Fort Campbell as part of that, you know, on their ad hoc committee. All right. So again, Vet Mixer coming up on Wednesday. That's uh, Alexander Brewing Company. The address is there. It's really set up just to be a networking event. Okay, so I hope to see as many people as there as possible. Um, we've done networking events where we've had over a thousand people come. I don't expect that this time, but I'd love to have a hundred folks, you know, that, that show up to this event. So I hope to see all of you there. All right, talked about VETA. Just want to share real quickly what their uh, kind of the top five is working on. Um, and it's going to go back to that survey. So I'm going to be sending that survey out. It'll probably be go out tomorrow at latest Wednesday. But it's going to ask, what are you seeing in the classroom? You know, have you had any experiences where it's been uncomfortable? Because it's been identified that the military affiliate students feel uncomfortable in the classroom. Uh, I've talked to several ROTC, you know, Reserve Officer Training Corps cadets that said they don't feel comfortable wearing the uniform on campus. Why is that? What's the environment? Why has it changed? Uh, you used to have a very active um, and proactive uh, ROTC program right here at NKU. So what, what, where, where are we, what can we do better uh, to support our military affiliate students? Um, max out training, I already mentioned uh, being worked on. Um, active duty dependent benefit in-state residency. Uh, it's something I've been fighting for since I arrived here in, back in August, but I, I turned another student away today. Um, you know, it's becoming a, a thing where it's almost weekly. And last week I had a, uh, a dean of one of the colleges reach out to me and just couldn't believe that we don't offer anything for active duty folks. Um, why is that? I don't know, but it's something that's being worked on through the VETA. Um, and Amy, I saw that you popped in on here or you were on here. Uh, just FYI for you and everybody else that's listening. I just learned today when I was talking to the active duty member that he's going through a specialized program through the United States Army where they have to give the school has to give an active duty rate or they can't attend it. Uh, so it's just another uh, fuel for the fire. So I thought that was interesting as well. Um, but we're working on single points of failures, you know, this key choke points. Uh, we want to make sure that we're set our students up for success and, uh, uh, you know, just make sure that the everybody's trained and uh, know how to handle uh, military affiliate and veteran students. Of course, we want to do that for all our students. We want to make sure we set them up for success, but just FYI. All right, the new space is what it's going to kind of look like. Okay, it's not going to look like that. Uh, but if you look in the top left-hand corner, um, like I said, we're going to revamp it. We're going to move where the offices currently are, move them out front. And so we'll have a new office that's put out front. Um, we'll have some privacy pods. Those privacy pods look like this. We'll have a two, a double pod. Um, for handicap accessibility and for, uh, you know, up to two people to go in there and study, um, do class, where the case may be. And kind of these single pods down here, we were adding one of those in. Had great news. I'm glad I can announce it uh, today because last week we, we received the funding for it. Um, so as far as I know, they've been ordered. At least we got the funding for them. So all that's coming to fruition. So it's very exciting to uh, be able to launch that here in the near future. Again, the reason for those is because of the hybrid model, we have a lot of students come in and do class and we're just not set up for that. We're wide open and uh, it's very difficult for them and we, we do interviews for them. But we also have uh, the new space where they'll have the big windows where they look out over, what is it, Lock Noors? I just learned that, I think from Amy the other day when she mentioned it. Um, I didn't know that's what the lake was called, but they'll have a great view of that as well. We'll have tables set up that can flip up so they can move them out of the way or they can set up a conference room so they can have their NORS vets meetings or they can do group study and so on and so forth like that. So very exciting um, to launch the new space, hopefully again in the fall, if not, maybe in May. So um, working with facilities, actually I mean with them tomorrow, kind of revamp this outdoor space as well. You know, ideally what I'd love to see is a kind of a pavilion put in there. How cool it'd be if uh, PNG had a PNG pavilion put in the back door back out there or something like that can help up in there too. We also want to put up a, a military um, tribute of some sort in that blank space right there. Uh, not necessarily maybe that, but just give you an idea. And I just always want to do this. I don't know if they'll let me. I always want to have it, uh, a gnome garden there 
as well. So everybody that's a, a veteran service organization or affiliate with the veterans, um, military and so on can bring their specific gnome that they decorate with their information and put it out there as a gnome garden. So just to share that information. All right, real quickly, um, I told you we're heading to Mars. This is where we're heading. What's that look like? Well, it'd be a space for all veteran service organizations to come in. Um, they can set up shop. It literally would be a one-stop shop for anything and anything you want to get accomplished um, as a military affiliate and veteran student or in the community. You know, it could be uh, open space for meetings, it could be um, resource rooms. The pods that we're getting, we uh, specifically asked the question, are they movable? And they are. They dropped down some, uh, they got, they're kind of on their own, um, they're on their own wheels. So you can drop those wheels down, you can move them right into the new Mars station. Um, so all that stuff can come with us as well. All right, right now, um, it's just me, right? <laughs> so Ryan, Dr. Padgett is our coordinator, or excuse me, is our director. Um, and then it's me and then I have about three to five student workers. So what's that gonna look like in the future? Because what we eventually wanna do is when we go to Mars is we wanna have breakout rooms, study rooms. Um, we'll have our pods in addition, but we'll have uh, these kind of like you see at the library as well. We'll have all new chairs and desks and tables that they can sit in and uh, pull their laptop on and do work. Um, and just be a, a nice big space for them, hang, again, hang out with like-minded folks to get the engagement. We'll have an actual computer lab instead of just a, a table with computers on it um, to be able to set up and so they can do schoolwork and so on and so forth there. Uh, but we'll have meeting room, training space, um, and an event center as well. So we can launch and do anything and everything that we're looking to and want to accomplish here in the very near future. So that will change the staff requirements up. This is my three to five year plan that I sent forth to leadership um, to add an assistant director, benefits liaison, career liaison, facility events manager, administrative assistant, and student workers would jump up from three to eight. So that's the goal, that's the vision, and that's the direction that we're heading. And I just want to spend uh, just a few minutes real quickly to jump onto our website to show you a few things since it is a revamped, redone website. Thank you, Blake for, from uh, Marcom for uh, putting up with me and putting all the energy and effort into it. Uh, but we broke it down in the tab. So if you're a future student, you can go and get information. If you're a current student, where do you go? Falcony and staff has their own tab they can go to. An interesting concept right here, if you click on the Green Zone Brigade, um, you can go down and look at all the people that have been part of the Green Zone. So if you're a student looking for someone um, in your area, you can go here, take a look and see who is available from your different uh, department. If you're, uh, we don't have everybody yet. So if you go and your department is not represented here, let me know or stop in and reach out to them, ask them um, if they'd be interested in joining the Green Zone Brigade. And again, they're just volunteers to help connect resources. Speaking of resources, right here, Veteran Resources is also under each tab as well, but we made it easy. Go here. There is a plethora of resources that are available for um, faculty, staff, students, anybody, community. This is going to be one of the clicks on the new Living Here website. We'll get them to resources. But again, they'll have access to us at any time to provide direct connect to these resources. So these resources are available for them as well. For the students that are on here, if you go to current student schedule an appointment, um, you can schedule an appointment directly with your school certifying official. Again, we're lucky to have them, Josh and uh, Denzel, as part of our team. Uh, training and videos, uh, I want to talk about this real quick. So all those trainings that I said that I've done in over the course of the last couple of semesters, I put out here. Wow, that's a really bad picture. I apologize <laughs> for that. But there's uh, uh, some resources that are available. I got uh, a note back from a student today and said she really appreciated the training video on how to start the GI Bill process um, and going through it. She said it helped her tremendously to get her paperwork together. So that's good to hear. Uh, but there's some other things on here as well. There's different podcasts and different things like that um, that is available that you can always go back and listen to. And it's also some news articles and so on and so forth. All right, let's jump back into the slides. I think you see that. Uh, for the student workers that are on here or for the students that are working, here, I will be hiring. I'm hiring right now. I'm always hiring, right, uh, for a VA student worker. Um, the VA actually pays 
the student worker to work here at the VRS. So there is a lot of rules and regulations they go through. It's not a whole lot of pay, but it's great. Uh, uh, some great you can put on your resume. You learn a lot about uh, benefits and resources and again, connecting to the community because that's what we do. We're, we're a connector and liaison to all our military affiliate veteran students, but also the North Kentucky community as well. So if you are interested in working at the VRS, please stop by UC131, shoot me an email and I'll send you the documents. Uh, we'll, I know we only got about a month left of school, probably only about three weeks, but uh, I need someone ASAP. So if you wanna start working, you can start working to, you know, as soon as the VA approves. And of course we'll be doing it. Um, if you're a summer student, um, you have to be actually using VA educational benefits to be because it is paid by the VA. To, to qualify, but we'll be hiring for the summer and also for the fall as well. All right, is there any questions out there? It was awfully quiet and I talked a lot and I apologize for that, but I appreciate the, your time, your attention, and I hope you got some information about VRS, who we are, what we do, um, the direction that we're heading and how important it is for to do engagement. Any questions? All right, not hearing questions, any comments, concerns, issues, problems. Anybody just want to invite me to lunch? I, you know, I, anything, anything at all. I, oh, I just wanted to say, Rocky, that you're doing an amazing job. And um, thank you so much for your energy and um, commitment and passion to for these students because it's contagious. So I'm sure everyone on this call feels the same. Yep, well, I totally. appreciate that tremendously. Thank you so much. You know, that's uh, the whole, th this is my passion. The reason I want to come to NKU because it allows direct access to people that are transitioning. And I know the struggles that they're going through. So anything and everything we can do um, as a staff, as faculty, uh, you know, we need to do it. And we're, everybody is working so hard and I can't thank everyone enough for all your support. Thank you so very mm. much. Totally, uh, totally agree with Amy, uh, Rusty. Um, and uh, Rusty, I did want to ask a question about our students. Is there a common major and minor that we see from our veteran students? Huh. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know if I have that answer, but that's a great question. I think I need to do a little research. It seems to me, just uh, talking to people that come through, um, business seems to be very popular. Um, nursing seems to be very popular. The MBA program seems to be very popular. And I get some org leadership here and there. I guess that falls under business. Um, those seem to be the most popular ones I've come across, but I'll have to do a little bit of research and put that. I'd like to know that myself, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. It would be. Yeah. So I appreciate you answering that question. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm going to delay the answer and get back to everybody. Sure. I'll, I'll stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Any other questions, comments, concerns, issues, problems? Really appreciate your uh, all this information. There's so much out there that I didn't know about, and um, definitely want to start participating in more gatherings and kind of build a add on to the support system that they have. Awesome, I appreciate that tremendously. Yeah, we're 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 always building our green zone brigade. That's for sure, and uh, <laughs> it takes a tribe. It does definitely take a tribe. Definitely. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you. And uh, if you need anything, you know where to find me, UC131. Um, you can email me at Mardis. That's M-A-R-D-I-S-R. Mike Alpha Romeo Delta India Sierra Romeo 2 at NKU.edu or veterans with an S, veterans resource at NKU.edu. Um, lots of great information on our website, and we're constantly updating and tweaking it. And uh, I get feedback all the time. It's like, well, this one's hard to find, and I got to click three times. We're working on that. We'll make it a single click if it's important enough. But uh, you're going to always reach out, and we're always here to support, just like all of you are. So I appreciate you guys again tremendously. And uh, I will see you on the next meeting. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you. Take care. You too. Bye.